Okay. Hi, I'm Robin Ginn. I'm the Executive Director of the OpenJS Foundation. I am here with Tiffany Lenuyen from Expedia, and we're going to talk to you about a really cool uh, customer case study, which is how Expedia is using OpenJS Foundation technologies. So, uh, hey, Tiffany, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Hi, so I'm Tiffany. I've been working at Expedia for the past two years and working on their landing pages as well as building their testing pipelines and generally trying to make the developer experience there uh, they're good and my free time then i'm also a mentor for free code camp montreal and i teach new people how to code and kind of reach their development goals that's very cool um so for those few people maybe in the world who don't know about expedia just give us um, a little description about um what you know what kind of company expedia is Sure. So, so Expedia, or rather Expedia Group, is a travel company that has uh, is a, a, a multi-billion dollar industry with millions of users uh, from all over, all over the world booking properties and booking uh, dates for their, their travels. Great. I know I use it all the time. So it's great to have you here. Um, so sort of just broadly, tell us about sort of the engineering team that you're on and what sort of challenges that you all face every day. Yeah, right now my engineering team is facing some pretty interesting problems. Essentially, uh, at Expedia, for, for context, we have a lot of different brands and a lot of different pages, which a lot of apps end up serving. So that makes it so that we have a lot of duplication of code and issues of inconsistency throughout the user flow that we want to solve. So that's what my team is doing. We're trying to reduce that duplication, reduce the inconsistencies, and make sure we're all aligned in our, in our design systems. Great. So then describe some of the solutions that you're building. Right now, it's uh, in order to kind of remove that, that uh, duplication, then we are building this library, which uh, is kind of making business level components that uh, can be reused throughout different clients that are tied to a GraphQL to, to data so that people can just use it and plug and play, for example, a property card or a header or, a, or something that has, that's kind of attached to data. And that will, and that is also uh, following accessibility norms, performance, SEO, uh, kind of best practices as well. And that's kind of what we're we're working on. That's great. I was going to ask you sort of what are some of the things that were really important from a developer point of view when you're divide when you're building a, a solution. So you just mentioned a few. Are there any sort of other top level ones? I thought I, I think I heard you mention some in your OzCon talk. About, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was saying there's some accessibility concerns, you know, also concerns that we want to make sure that the bots are properly uh, tracking and seeing through all the metadata that is on our page. And uh, I think that was, oh yeah, and also performance, making sure that uh, we're, our pages are not too slow and that we're not kind of pushing big libraries that are maybe a little bit too, too hefty. Oh, cool. So tell us, uh, how did you build your solution? What technologies did, did you end up using and how were those all put together? We ended up using TypeScript, uh, React, Node, and um, GraphQL with uh, React Apollo. So that's kind of the, the way that that library was built. We, we have internally a UI library for kind of these, these smaller pieces of the UI. So the fundamental pieces like H1s and A tags buttons. Uh, but we, we didn't have anything to, that would make a like a hotel card or a, something that is a little bit big, bigger, more business level and also tied to to data, uh, which is kind of reused everywhere. So uh, those were the, the those are the text that, that we use and we try to make it kind of server side uh, driven as well. Great. Um, and then tell us about your testing. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, so our, our testing suite is uh, pretty robust uh, and it has been kind of ongoing for the past couple of years. Uh, we have an, an unit test and end to end test and an integration test. So that's using Jest testing library for React in our case. Uh, and then we have Cypress, which uses Mocha under the hood uh, for our end to end and our visual regression test. And then we use browser stack for some, some smoke tests for cross device and cross browser testing as well. Oh, great. Um, and then I heard that you were using the ESLint project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Solutions. Tell us about that. So uh, ESLint, as you know, is a is a pretty well known linter at this point, and we use that at the step of the testing pipeline, which is the static checks, which catch so many bugs and and so many kind of formatting and code smells right before we we even push anything. And so that for us, it's really important because it's low cost, but it, it it's also 
there to resolve a lot of issues for us before we even ship, right? And so it's going to be catching, it's going to be catching things like if you forgot to um, initiate a variable before using it or assign it some, some value. So we're able to catch those errors uh, before they, they ship, as well as for new users that come into Expedia or people that are not really used to JavaScript, TypeScript and, and React yet, it kind of gives them the kind of these rules and these don't do this and don't follow these, follow these types of standards instead of other standards. Uh, so that's kind of how we, we use it as well. So to save the time from our more experienced UI engineers from having to kind of teach them and, and train them through the pull, pull request reviews. Oh, cool. So describe like a common scenario because I use Expedia all the time. So tell me like if something's not working, what, is the, what are the sort of the common things that you see and then how do you fix that? Um, for related to ESLint or just kind of a general problem? Um, either, whichever, you know. Yeah, so for, for us, um, if we, we see on a page that there is an accessibility um, bug somewhere where this image doesn't have an alt tag or this anchor tag doesn't have, isn't connected to the proper buttons, then that usually would end up getting flagged to us by our product managers. And then that ends up going into the queue of our technical product managers and going back to the developers that then have to kind of figure out what this, this issue is. That usually at that point, we would look at the testing to see what tests have been written yeah. that would, because we would have, we should have been testing that anyway. And then that kind of goes all back into fixing that bug. So it's, we much prefer that these things, which could have been caught by ESLint if we did have, ES, which we do have now in place, uh, ESLint can help us catch those types of um, accessibility bugs that are kind of surface level. And uh, at in that point, we would have fixed it before even, even shipping it. Oh, great. Great. So a lot of, I mean, you catch a lot before it even reaches a general consumer. So that's, mm -hmm. that's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Um, so I know you mentioned some other OpenJS foundation projects you're using uh, Node.js, for example. How is Expedia using Node.js? So Node is, yeah, we, Expedia used to be more Java and JSP centric, and there was a push to kind of modernize these, these um, applications using Node and React and, and, and TypeScript. So now most of our applications, I'd say, that are serving web pages are using, using Node. Um, and it's been working very well. I think that there's been a lot of training for kind of getting our Java developers more familiar with JavaScript, but Node in itself has been going, going very smoothly. And we use Node paired with Express for, for apps, which is Express, of course, is another open yeah. just <laughs> project yeah. and to, to server pages. And uh, it's also part of our internal scaffolding and build tool. So the scaffolding is being kind of setting up that repository and the build tool kind of very similar to create React app. We have our own uh, that spins up these, these web apps and we use uh, that scaffolding tool uses Node and Express and, and all those tools. Great, that's great to hear. Um, you're even using, I, I talk about sort of the globalization aspect. I think I heard you're using some of our, our other technologies. How do you globalize and scale your, your apps? Yeah, so as, as, as you know, our users are really from all over the world and they are purchasing or they're renting properties for certain dates and travel. So it, having that invoice come out with really the proper currency, the proper date formats is, and, and all that is extremely, extremely important. And also, and I'm sure any developer would say dealing with dates and formatting and localization is a huge pain mm -hmm. and having globalized there and globalized within our internal build and, and scaffolding tool is super helpful and makes that, that really difficult, complex piece of work really trivial for us to use. That's great. I'm sure the globalized maintainers will be happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So how do you all measure what you're building? I mean, from a developer point of view or maybe just your team, what kinds of things do you look at overall? Uh, you know, we, in terms of metrics. You know what you're, how do you measure your success? Mm. We, we do it in a few ways. There's, I think it, when I first joined, it kind of started out as a conversion rates of how, how many people were uh, based on certain experience, how, how many people were uh, buying, uh, booking more properties based on if it was red or if it was blue. Not, that's not really an experiment, but uh, to show my point. And now we're taking into account a little bit more qualitative data of, of trying to see, well, maybe right now it's, it's not as uh, impactful, but in the long run, then this is 
going to improve the customer experience and provide customer value in different other ways as well. So I'm not a, a product manager, but it's, that's kind of how I see it uh, being looked at. Great. It sounds like you pretty, have a really nice integration with the product managers, your dev team, probably yeah, your mar yeah. marketing folks for SEO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have our we have our own uh, SEO team, and we have our product managers that kind of really let us know uh, why something is is winning or, or how how to, how it's doing and how we can improve it. And the developers are right part of that. Just, that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, great. So um, let's see what other questions do I have. Um, one question I always like to ask developers when they're working is like, what would be just a great day for you? What's a great day when you come into work and you're like, ah, this was a great day. A day, a great day for me is when I don't have too many meetings and I can concentrate on, on doing one task. I'm, I'm at a point where I, most of what I do is helping others and kind of getting on meetings, pairing and, and figuring that out. And that's great, but sometimes I just want to be able to delve into a problem and spend a few days or, or even consecutive three hours of, of solving it. Um, and then being able to push it, merge it in at the end, having all the tests pass. That's, that's a great day. That's great. Well, you've been sharing your expertise with others as well, public speaking. I know you spoke at OpenJS World in Montreal, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, oh, and uh, the OSCon Superstream, those are my first two speaker experiences. Hopefully I'll do more. That's great. And I know we have your slides on our website from, uh, from the Montreal event for people who want to do a deep dive on some of the solutions. Mm -hmm. Great. So is there anything I missed that you think would be important to share for developers working in, in your space? Well, I think that UI testing in general is, is pretty new and there's a lot of new modern tools that can make, make things a lot better. Um, before, and you had to kind of always use the Selenium based or rather web driver based tools and it was always kind of flaky and annoying and people would have to People, even at Expedia, we have some repos that still kind of use these and it's always a pain to have to refactor or make any new changes if people dread that testing pipeline. So I think it's important, even though it's a little bit, it can be a little bit daunting to look into these tools and to try to build it in a, a user centric way, which is not something that I, I think a lot of people would normally think about, but it helps so much and it helps the developer experience. That's great. So fast. Yeah. That's very cool. And that user centric testing is really what you've been really sharing your knowledge. So mm -hmm. we really appreciate you sharing your knowledge with us, the OpenJS Foundation and all of our communities and uh, really appreciate uh, Expedia as a great uh, case study for our technologies. Of course. Thanks for having us. Yeah.